Hi guys, for those that don't know me, my name's Tim. I'm the owner here at TJP Auto and 4x4. Um, we do a lot of suspension repairs, GV upgrades and things like that on four drives. Um, and a bit of my background is I'm a fully qualified mechanic, auto electrician and mechanical engineer. Um, so I do have a background in engineering. Um, today I just wanted to bring up, and just before I do, this video, I'm no artist, so they're not the best drawings in the world, and I have got notes. Um, that's not highly edited, it's run on the fly so I can go through some bits and pieces and I don't want to miss some points with you. I'm just doing a quick video today on load assist airbags. Um, mainly going to use the leaf spring setup that we're going to talk about um, because it's the most common vehicle that we see them in. We do see them in cruises and patrols and things like that, but we're not going down the coil spring path. If there's enough um, requests, I might do one on coil spring load assist airbags later. But today we're doing it on leaf spring setups um, and I've got a bit of an example here and we'll run through some, some things on it. First off, what are airbags, load assist airbags? So on a leaf sprung suspension, a load assist airbag is designed to assist with load. It will normally sit between your chassis rail and your diff housing. Some, not many anymore, will sit between the chassis rail and the leaf spring but generally between the chassis rail and the diff housing, it fits on a couple of brackets, and it's a bag here, you'll have an airline at the back, or you might have them on a compressor setup. Um, once again, don't judge any of my drawings, I'm not an artist. <laughs> so that's what a load assist airbag is. Now, generally what you'll do is people have them installed in the vehicle to try and level out a load, um, and things like that. But before we get to that point, I wanna start off at the start. And I'm gonna use the next gen Ranger Wild Track as an example. Um, and I'm not gonna get into axle weights and stuff too much. I don't wanna go down to that rabbit hole. I wanna be more about the load, about load assist airbags in this video. But to give you an example, and, and we know because we weigh a lot of empty, brand new, off the truck, next gen ranges when we fit GVM upgrades. Their rear axle weight's generally about 1,060 on average with an empty tank of fuel when they come to us. They can be up to 1,910. So they've got 850 kilos load they can take in the back in a tub tray wild track ranger. Now, the idea of an air assist airbag is it's to assist the back of the vehicle, help it level the load. Now, generally, if you don't level the load in a vehicle, your, your car might, and once again, don't judge me, your car might sit like that without a load on, and then you put a load on, and what it'll actually do, if your rear springs are too soft, etc., it might go like that and lift at the front. Now, generally, especially if you're towing, which we're talking about in this case, generally, if you're towing, and this is the front of the car, and it's pointing up, you'll get a lot of porpoising. Every time the, the van or whatever you're towing puts weight in the back of the vehicle, it'll porpoise, it'll lift the front. It'll be horrible to drive, and you won't have a very good time. I'm just gonna, I don't wanna get into that too much at the moment, but that's generally why people fit them. Now, stock springs, leaf springs and suspension are designed in a compromised way. They're designed to give the passengers and drivers the best comfort, whilst also maintaining and being able to carry some of the load capacity of the vehicle. Some being the point, there's not, there's not a perfect world where a spring will ride like a limo but carry a thousand kilos. It doesn't exist. Um, parabolics aren't the answers to that either. Um, they're a compromise as well, and there's always some sort of compromise. And getting that compromise right can take some experience and not always relying on caravanning pages on Facebook and what people say on there because it's not always the case. So, a stock leaf spring and a set of airbags. Now, that would probably be okay if you was carrying up to about 1,500 kilos, 1,600 kilos on the rear axle. Um, or maybe we'd probably recommend that in a situation where someone has an empty tub and they might have a light caravan no, like a camp trailer, something like that, 1,800 kilos, would say, hey, yeah, use the stock spring, just put a set of bags in it to assist the load. Um, generally, from there on, most people are going lifts with bags or rated springs with bags, which I've got another video on rated springs and bags on our channel, so go and check that out. Um, rated springs and bags we might be something like a 500 kilo constant and some air bags, or 300 kilo constant leaf and some air bags, and I'll there's a video on our channel about constant springs and how they work. Um, but 
that's generally a combination that people will use. Now, the big thing I wanted to get onto here today, before I get lost and go down the wrong rabbit hole, is do they bend chassis? Can they bend chassis? Yes, they can bend chassis and contribute to that, absolutely. But generally, it's because of improper use or not having the right setup in the back of the vehicle. Um, there have definitely 100% been cases of vehicles bending chassis with airbags in them. Um, but generally it's because the vehicle's not set up right or the bags aren't being used properly. And once again, using the leaf springs as an example, most bellow, which is what they call the style airbag in the back of a leaf spring vehicle, most bellow airbags are capable of holding 100 PSI of air. Now that's a lot of pressure and that makes this connection between there and there very rigid. Now, if you have to have your rear airbags inflated at 100 PSI, you're probably gonna bend something because you're overloaded. It's as simple as that. That bag should not need to be anywhere near 100 PSI. Just because it can be, doesn't mean it should. Um, and that's where you will run into difficulties. Because obviously here, in a leaf spring vehicle, the connection points are here and here for the differential to the vehicle through the leaf spring. You're adding another connection point here, which isn't a designed stress point in the chassis. Um, so you don't want to overload that point on the vehicle. And when people are bending chassis, generally what happens is it might be someone running a stock spring and 400 kilos in the tub and 500 kilos on the back by the time they put the ball weight on on the rear axle and they're overweight anyway and what they're doing is on a stock spring they're trying to get the airbag to do all the work which just doesn't work you can't do that so airbags are great they are fantastic but they've got to be set up right and the setup has to be right to suit your combination of vehicle we get it quite often um people come in and say oh i've got a leaf sprung vehicle i've got a tub on the back fiberglass canopy fridge in the back blah 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 okay straight up fiberglass canopy fridge and a bit of gear you look and turn it for kilos on the rear and then they're going to go and tow a max atm band of three and a half ton and they just want some bags to stop the arse from sagging and generally putting bags in that situation is not necessarily the answer. They've got to be used in the right combination with the spring. Um, so what you'd basically turn around and do, if you had a next gen range, once again as an example, uh, tub on the back, fiberglass canopy, drawers, fridge, and a little bit of gear in the back. So drawers, draw pair, about 100 kilos, plus a bit of gear, so say 150. Canopies range between 50 and 100 kilos, so, so we'll take, say 250 and some other gear. So you've got 350 kilos in the back of your tub, and then, at maximum ball weight, you're gonna put 350 kilos on the tow ball, which then puts probably about 420 on the reactor. So you've got a ton in the back and you wanna put all that through an airbag. The ideal way in that situation, if you're not towing with that vehicle very often, what would say to you, okay, how often do you tow with a vehicle? Uh, I only go away on long weekends um, and a couple of weeks during the school holidays. So you don't want it to ride like crap when it's empty um, but you want it to be able to handle the load. So in that situation, you'd probably turn around and say, okay, well, what we would recommend for you is to have a 300 kilo constant spring in the rear with airbags to assist when the load's on, because that's what they're called, load assist airbags. They're not a replacement for a spring, they're to assist with the load. Uh, and that's where a lot of people get it wrong. They're generally just getting stock springs, whacking bags in and wondering why things are bending. And that's not how it works. You're, that's not what it's designed to do. It's not just designed to replace a heavier duty spring, it's designed to assist that spring in certain situations. Now, if you had a vehicle that was used every day, full time to tow a caravan, um, I'd be more inclined to say to you, hey, don't worry about the bags, put 500 kilo constants in the rear. And then if you need bags, we'll look at that from there. Um, if you're just towing an excavator every day as a trade and you had a full aluminium canopy on the back that had 500 kilos in it, it'd, it'd be springs, bags to assist with that. So it's getting that combination right. Um, a lot of, well, sorry, not a lot, quite a few four wheel drive stores, um, chain stores, probably the biggest way. A lot of people aren't trained in knowing this and they're just designed to sell you a lift kit. Um, getting that right is a bit of an art and asking the right questions leads to the process of getting that right. So just make sure if you are shopping for a lift kit, or a GM upgrade or a spring upgrade or something for the rear vehicle to tow and tour, make sure the people are asking you the right questions because if they're not asking you the right questions, your setup isn't gonna be right. Um, so just make sure of that. 
and be sure to check out our channel because there's another video on there about constant load leaf springs and what that means. Thanks guys.